Hey guys, Ben here again with another high-end power system, another Crusader. This one is particularly full-on in the monitoring system, which is why I wanted to show it off and talk about a few things. It also includes our BMS Delete, which is one of the, the products or the services we do, I suppose, that I get the most questions on. So I'm hoping to go a little bit more into technical detail this time, but let's have a bit of a closer look. All right, obviously we've got another one of these setups here where we've gone for the full BMS Delete, but um, this particular one's very, very high end in the monitoring side of things. So what we've done is we've utilized dual shunts with the latest Victron Orion XS. We can see what alternator charging's up to. The purpose of the second shunt is we can see exactly what our DC loads are doing. We've got so many V-Direct devices that we had to use a uh, USB hub on our Servo GX, but I'll touch on all that in a sec. So starting from the, the bottom going to the top, I suppose, we've got two Chevy 300 amp hour lithium batteries with room for a third, so up to 900. That's all powered up to this Lynx distribution unit here. It's our high current fuse block, and we're using that to supply power to these three smaller fuse blocks, as well as some of our battery chargers and our inverter and whatnot. Now, this uh, second fuse block, our medium current fuse block, I'll call it, it, especially all its negatives, are only hooked up to loads, and they pass through the second shunt, and that basically gives us a, um, a DC loads output on our touchscreen, which I'll show you soon. And it basically means if it tells us we're using 97 watts and we're producing 300, that is on the money. It's no longer an implied reading like it used to be in the old systems, which is super important on smaller caravan systems, unlike houses and boats and things like that, where the difference between 50 watts and 100 watts can be substantial. It now means our monitoring is on the money. Now, what we've also done is where we've got the Servo GX Mark II over here, we've utilized all the USB ports. We went for the Mark II because it has three USB ports we can use. We've plugged a one, two, a one in and then four out USB hub. Uh, we've used the second USB port for the GX Tank 140, and we've used the third for another Bluetooth adapter. And that'll just take the Bluetooth load off the unit itself. And the reason we've done that is because we've got two Mopeka Bluetooth gas sensors on the front and some Ruby temperature sensors around the place as well that'll need to be constantly in communication with that device. Then obviously the USB hub, that just gives us a whole bunch of more V-Direct connections, obviously with two smart shunts, four solar controllers, the DC-DC charger, um, yeah, that's seven. Um, the unit itself only comes with three. So we've gone, the, the USB hub lets us connect all these devices up to that Servo GX. And it basically means when we look at that touchscreen later, we can see exactly what each of these regulators are producing. So we can go, okay, you're making us 300 watts, you're making us 200 watts, you're making us 100 watts, you're making us 400 watts. And we can see exactly what each of the panels are up to. Um, you, know, you can see what your portable is doing in comparison to your roof, that sort of stuff. We'll be able to see what our alternator is putting in off the new Victron Orion XS. They're an absolutely fantastic DC-DC charger, super efficient, super small, super light, very high power. And then of course, we've labeled all the loads where we've rewired it all in. To accomplish all this, of course, we had to do a full BMS delete to make sure all the loads ran through the second shunt. Very labor intensive installation, having to take out the old BMS and replace it all with manual fusing and switching. We've obviously put in three relays, so the customer has a 12 volt load switch. Um, he has two pumps in here, so he's got two relays, one for each of those, so he can do his drinking pump versus his standard pump. And then we've got you know fans on temperature control. There's a heck of a lot of stuff that went into this install, but basically it just means that when we look at that touchscreen in a sec, you'll see the level of monitoring that this system does allow you to have. Um, and then I guess moving on to the BMS delete a little bit more too. By taking out the old BMS, it does mean that when we run our power from our Victron system, it goes straight from our batteries through our fuse blocks and a relay to the loads. It's not passing through this system and then going off to a secondary battery management system where it then gets distributed from there. And also means the customer no longer has any redundant touch screens or anything. This is obviously a brand new caravan, just like the last Crusader we worked on. You don't wanna be in a brand new caravan and have another screen in there that you can go, oh, uh, ignore the battery readings on that. You look at the tank readings. This pretty much means you'll have one nice touch screen that tells you absolutely everything that's going on in your caravan. And uh, that's what I'll show you now. So let's go have a look. All right. Here's the fascia. So you can see where the installers of obviously and the CNC guys, got to give them credit, where they've laser cut out this new fascia and wrapped it. And that basically hid all the old holes. It allowed us to take out the old touchscreen, any of the redundant equipment all came out and it made for a completely bespoke finish. So we've got the Touch 70 monitoring system just here. And you'll notice we're running the beta OS. So it's not a full release as of the making of this video, but um, for the purpose of showing you guys what it's capable of, we've obviously enabled it. For the customers, we pretty much always recommend that they run a standard release, unless they're really tech savvy and they wanna opt for the beta. But uh, we're gonna be showing off the beta today because it's why we wired it the way we have. Now, <clears throat> starting with the first main menu, we have the brief here. It gives us battery percentage, what our LPG percentage is, what our wastewater percentage, our freshwater percentage. Gives you a quick overview on basically all of your state of charges and state of capacities of all the stuff we have on board. But if we move back over to overview for the time being, and this is what I was talking about with the solar yield 
the alternator yield and the grid yield. So you can actually see what grid's putting in through the inverter, what the DC to DC charge is putting in. And there's a way you can make this work even with non-Victron equipment, but um, that's, that's something for another video. Of course, we've used all Victron on this system here. But basically, grid, alternator, solar. And if we actually touch on that solar yield, we can go into it and we can see what all of the independent arrays are doing. So obviously our 440 watt portable array is doing absolutely nothing because it's not plugged in. <laughs> and then you can see our 800 watt array. Obviously it's late afternoon and we're in the shade partly because we're near our shed. So it's only putting in um, 100 watts. Plus I'm pretty sure the battery's full so it'll slow up anyways. Then we've got our 520 watt solar array. Um, it's putting in 44 and then our 260 watt solar array and it's putting in 38. Um, and then we've also included how we've wired it on here too. So we've got two, uh, two series, two parallel for the 800, two series, two parallel for the 520, and then just two parallel for the 260. And it's because of how we've cabled it here that we've determined what fusing and what breakers to use. I did touch on that in another video, and I think I'll skip over it for this one because it's a long conversation to have. So that's the main overview. Um, this DC loads is also something that I wanted to touch on. So that was why we fitted up the second shunt. If I actually touch on it, it'll tell us our second shunt we can see exactly what our loads are using because it's measured completely independently of the charging system. So that's a whole separate smart chunk than what we use to monitor the batteries themselves. And then obviously your AC loads are measured through your MultiPlus and that's always been relatively accurate. So that, that remains the same way as it always has. If we move over to this levels page though, this is a really cool page. We've got our four water tank levels. So we can see our front fresh, middle fresh, rear fresh. And then we can see our gray water tank as well. And then you can see the two Mopeka LPG sensors that we've also hooked up for the customer. Finally, if I touch the screen and hit environment, it moves us onto our temperature page. We've only got one temperature sensor hooked up at the moment and it is the fridge sensor. So we can see right now that the fridge is at five degrees Celsius and a relative humidity of 46%. So that can be pretty cool. You can put them on the outside, on the inside, in your fridge, in your freezer, um, let you keep an eye on everything. And you can actually set the system to send you alerts if your fridge is not running at the temperature it should, or if any one of these things doesn't sound right, if you're running low on water, maybe if your gray water's too full, you can have the system alert you automatically. So you can sort of see why the BMS Delete tied in with all of this monitoring um, can be very, very bespoke. It does make for a very, very modern look um, and the, the usability is just absolutely unmatched by any other brand out there at the moment. So we're very, very excited to be fitting up more of these, um, these full-on Victron systems with all of the monitoring on board.